Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you my third King of Ravens team. I showed one using all yellow troops a day or two ago, and one using all purple troops a couple of days before that. So all these teams are viable for Guild Wars, and you're going to see this guy a lot in Guild Wars, believe me, because it is an absolute beast for just keeping you mana drained and just stopping the teams from casting. Really, really good. Explodes all purple gems and spirit gems, which are blue. Deals magic based damage to the last two enemies boosted by spirit gems. The traits are really cool as well. Immune to mana burn, mana drain and mana steal. It means it doesn't get drained from its own spirit gems. And converts two blue gems to spirit gems when its turn begins. So really cool. Let's, let's have a look at this team with blue. We have Rope Dart, the King of Ravens, Mercy and the Possessed King. Now, Possessed King is really, really cool in this team. He's literally only there as backup emergency damage if we need it, because there is a chance it can transform the enemy to a random daemon, which we don't really want. Sometimes it transforms the enemy into a more powerful troop than was there in the first place, which can be really annoying. It is mainly there for this explode two random gems on four or five gem matches. Now, we're going to get this a lot because we are going to get extra from this as well because we're in Tidecaller class for this. Explode a blue gem when matching four or more gems. So that's three gems that are gonna be exploded when we get a four match. And explode a blue gem is particularly useful because spirit gems are blue. So basically, we'll be mana draining the enemy just by getting these random explosions. It's gonna be nuts and we're gonna be getting plenty of mana at the same time. Rope Dart uses blue. This gets charged up. King of Ravens gets charged up really quickly and it's all a lot of fun a lot of mana drain on the enemy super fast mana gen and yeah absolutely love what i've played of it so far mercy you can use her from the start because she starts empowered start battles with full mana giving life to the weakest ally transforming purple to yellow to boost the effect and cleansing all allies so really really cool the transform purple to yellow if you get a four match is going to basically like charge up our rope dart in king of ravens really quickly because we'll get a load of explosions from the possessed king and that crashing wave third trait. You'll see what I mean in a minute when I run the team. But yep, you're going to be in Tidecaller class for this. Snap Freeze, Insulated, Anti-Magic Sphere, Mana Source, Deluge, really good when fighting those annoying goblin teams at the same time because you get to freeze them from the start as well as have a fast start yourself and submerge a random ally on four or five gem matches, which we will get plenty of. Uh, Water Mastery and Eternal Summer. So we're one Arnu, an Orpheus, and a Noisha in this. Let's take a look at the banner. I'm going to go for a plus two blue, plus one yellow, minus one brown. And yeah, let's take it out there. All right, let's take it out and show you a few PVPs then. Uh, one Noisha, one Arnu, one Orpheus. This team generates mana so fast it is absolutely ludicrous. Bit of a funny team this, but we'll fight it anyway. See what we can do. I was looking for that purple to yellow straight away for Mercy. If you get it, cast it, you get cleanse, you get more life, you get roped dart up really, really quickly. These four matches are really good. We've got extra um, explosions here. We've got these two explosions from here on a four or five gem match. And also we get another one from this crashing wave third trait. Explode a blue gem when matching four or more gems. So we'll do that. It picks up mana for the team, takes out those spirit gems, draining mana from the enemy more mana and that's the uh, raven up ready at a rock and roll so we'll grab someone annoying first and then we'll do a damage from him in last place he thinks he's being sneaky in last place but he's actually in the firing line all those four matches look caused those explosions and caused these two to get charged up absolutely straight straight away again really cool uh who should we grab next that dude Let's grab that. It's caused more explosions, more death, more death. Rope dart and <laughs> rope dart is up again. They're dead. Oh, that's just ludicrous. What have I created with this? This is a monster. Should we cast this? What should we do? Are they gonna? Yeah, summon a spider when I take damage. So. Um, looking my rope dart up first. Hitting really hard with that. So for that reason, I am going to take that match. 
Let's grab them, soften them up. Is there enough damage here? Not quite. But we can cast these back to back. So this does have a risk of transforming into a daemon. But it's only 20%, three separate 20% chances. So uh, yeah, let's do this. And if you get any sort of lucky match like that, they got left on one. Oh, they got a spider, but we don't care about that. That's going to be absolutely spanked into oblivion. Should we cast this? Yeah. Super easy, super fast managing. Absolute beast. This is probably the 20th game in PvP I've had of this. And it's been absolutely demolishing. The mana gen on it is absolutely superb. Or oh, this is a good test for it because a couple of these are invulnerable. So they're not going to get affected by mana drain. So yeah, I do like to test it against the harder teams. So I'm glad this one came up. So purple to yellow is not a thing, but we do have this. This we can um, take away from Thrall. This has mana shield as well in this team, but we can still grab somebody to the front. Who's it going to be? That's where Rook Dart is so good because where this troop here, this is really nice to have in first place because it reduces damage from Scars by 50%. Stuns, gets barrier, can be a real pain, but we drag that to the top. These four matches are going to cause explosions again, which charge up the team, look. Madness. Madness, I tell you. Right, so we are now... See, we're hitting them just randomly with these skull hits, because we're getting so much cascades from these explosions. Right, what should we do now? Good way to attack these stealthy opponents is... um when they've been moved to last place, or in last place, because this is going to hit them automatically. So what we can actually do with the extra turn is... Should we finish that off, or grab Leonis Tower and take away its armour? Uh, yeah, let's do that. We are entangled ourselves at the moment. So let's do this damage to the last enemy. <laughs> More explosions. Rope darts up again, just automatically. Really cool. All right, let's just sort out one of their big players. Let's actually just use that to get rid of that thing. Let's use this to soften up those last troops. Can risk it with this. I'm going to take out their enraged Kurandara with that. That worked. Now what we got? Rope dart again? Why not? Soften up Thrall. Um, what we got now? So this is normally a really dangerous team, and it's so far been controlled really, really well. Not too worried about taking this. Put purple to yellow. It's not a big deal right now I'm on the board, unless things suddenly change, which they obviously can. I'd rather get some purple. And slap him out of there. Now, Trick and Treat is the only one that's left. This can be an absolute pain, or just on its own, Trick and Treat. Really annoying. Stealthy, Rising Shadows, a 34% chance to summon a giant spider when I take damage. Gets enchanted when it casts, because obviously it gives all the positive status effects to itself. While giving you a load of bad ones. Right, so what we got? We have got some mana. Let's do that. They did get the thing then, the um, summon, but they're about to die anyway, so we're not too worried about that. So see you later. And just again, the spider to deal with, and another really well controlled game. Let's soften up with some damage. We'll get some skull hits. Let's cast rope dart. Let's do a big wallop. Oh, I'll just about to take that next. That was nice for Mercy then. Sport my fun. And um, let's get it done. It's just a matter of time now. 
Oh, none of my colours are there. It is what it is. Any yellow, any blue, or just a wallop. Will do. I didn't mean to be a rhyme, it just ended up like that. Oh yeah, another cool easy win. This time we got Furk's mate Axel Luba. Starts battles with full mana again, so another full mana team. Two of them starting empowered. So satisfying if you can get the start and just take away that empowered start. It's absolutely crucial in Guild Wars. Can make an absolute major, major difference and completely change the game and turn it on its head absolutely straight away. So we've not got anything on the conversion that's brilliant straight away, purple to yellow. Oh, yes we have. Oh, didn't look properly then. So I was looking at that. Don't be tempted to get that when you see that sort of thing when you're starting with Mercy because when you take that, it's going to cause the explosion from the Possessed King and the weapon, the crashing wave, and that could potentially spoil this. So always do that first. There you go. Rope darts up. If you want to get your Raven up as well, we can take that yellow as well. Both top troops are now ready to go. All right. And we've drained some mana at the same time. Let's grab their Kurandara to the top. <laughs> and kill it. Already gone. Now, there's no spirit gems there for the boost, so we may as well cast this and just do some damage and get some mana for the team. Rope darts off again. Let's cast this. Who should we grab this time? Let's grab actual face. These four matches cause explosions, giving mana to the team all over the place. Again, let's do this, attacking the last two troops. Wow, a couple of lovely cascades there. Sorting his team out in a hurry. Let's drain some mana maybe. Let's take a look around for a possible conversion from um, Mercy. But nothing quite good enough there yet, so we'll take away a bit more mana while getting our rope dot up at the same time. Not going to take this, don't need it. Grab matey boy to the top. Now the last two opponents, well the top two now, but they're also the last two, so they become default bang in line for this. Alright, so let us do that first. And that will be the end of them. Let's get rid of that. So you can cast your Possessed King, I just don't like it, it's only a matter of time before you get unlucky and get a, a daemon in its place. Let's just get our uh, troops charged up and finish them off normally. So good using blue for this because it just has a double effect with those spirit gems. Really, really handy. Well, that's going to be good for our, well, well I was going to say good for our raven but we didn't need it. Let's do one more. I'm actually really enjoying using this team. So satisfying. Just starting seeing these troops starting with full mana. You're not going to get it all the time with Mercy, but hey, you can you can just cast it even if there's not a match sometimes just to get your team cleansed. It's really cool. We're having a nice little rubber to green right now. We've got a lovely conversion here again. Watch their mana disappear. Sorry, nothing for you. Rope dart up straight away. So, so good. Let's cast this, grab Zuli head to the top. Those four matches just do the stuff on their own. You almost feel like you're watching this. You almost feel like you're watching the show unfold in front of you without actually doing much. Um, all right, let's get Thrali up. More four matches, more auto mana gains, more auto hits. You don't have to take these, but I'm just doing it just for the for the hell of it, it's just because we're getting automatic hits just by the cascades, just generating mana that we don't need, automatically hitting skulls. Crazy. It's been doing this consistently as well. I've, yeah, I've played this team quite a lot now. And not only is it fun to use, it's just, just a bit of a wrecking machine like this. Let's just do that to get rid of them. Let's use rope dart. Then what we got? 
do another four match, it's going to cause explosions and get our troops up all over again. Not enough to kill it, but it's going to be pretty close. But we're going to do some explodey skulls anyway. And their doom is nigh. Bye. Right, well, there's my last for now. Anyway, King of Ravens team, so that's one for blue. Using all blue troops, one for yellow I done yesterday, and I did one for purple a day or two before that. So all viable for Guild Wars. This is a superb troop, an absolutely fantastic troop, one of the best mythics in the game, just for that amazing, amazing mana gen and the way it just um, just removes the, the uh, mana from the enemy. All those troops that start up empowered, it's going to be absolutely awesome against that. Inari is another really cool troop that works really well for the uh, Spirit Drain side of things. So yeah, I think you're going to be seeing this guy a lot on uh, defences in Guild Wars. Absolutely superb. Well, there's a video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to bash that like and subscribe button. Really cool if you did that. But most of all, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.